Welcome to the Did Nothing Wrong podcast, where we try to cut through the noise and help you make sense of the chaotic information space around us. I'm Griff Somke. And I'm Jay McKenzie. China's balloon inflates the MAGA base's false narrative about Biden, and the GOP civil war rages on as Nikki Haley announces her candidacy for the GOP nod in 2024. Will she excite the base or get flattened by the Trump train? If you like what you're hearing, please make sure to subscribe to the newsletter at didnothingwrongpod.com. And if you're listening to us on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, or Spotify, please give us a five-star rating. We've got a great show for you today. Thanks for joining us. The Chinese spy balloon came and went in a few days, and it was catnip for the MAGA content creators who latched onto the story as a great way to make Trump look strong and make Biden look weak. At first, in their telling, the story was all about how Joe Biden allowed a Chinese spy balloon to fly over America, because in their telling, he's a pawn of the Chinese Communist Party and its head, Xi Jinping. Things quickly changed, however, when the Pentagon revealed that Chinese balloons flew over the country while Trump was president, too. First, Trump and MAGA media denied this as fake news, and once that got too hard to believe, they said the deep state must have hidden this story from Donald Trump, because if he'd known about it, he would have downed those suckers in an instant. Jay, can you break this down for us a bit? Well, Donald Trump did nothing wrong, right? Right. Start there. <laughs> Let's start there. Roger Stone may have popularized the did nothing wrong slogan with the Trump base, but it really starts with Trump and starts with Trump doing nothing wrong. So yeah, this feels like it shouldn't have even been a story. It feels like maybe it should have been mentioned that, oh, there's this Chinese spy balloon and we've never seen this before, or maybe we've just at least never talked about this before. And how did it get there? And is it definitely China's? And what are they doing? Which is a pretty mundane and boring set of articles that MAGA media has no interest in dissecting because it does not make for great content. It makes for maybe a nice research paper or it, it's good for the intelligence community right. to review and, and look through. But everybody knows China's spying on the United States. We know they do this. Here's FBI Director Chris Ray. The biggest threat we face as a country from a counterintelligence perspective is from the People's Republic of China and especially the Chinese Communist Party. No country presents a broader, more severe threat to our ideas, our innovation, our economic security than China. Uh, and they are targeting our innovation, our trade secrets, our intellectual property uh, on a scale that's unprecedented in history. They are, have a bigger hacking program than that of every other major nation combined. They have stolen more of Americans' personal and corporate data than every nation combined. So the FBI is keenly focused on the China counterintelligence threat. Uh, we are now moving at a pace where we're opening a new China counterintelligence investigation about every 12 hours. Yeah, it's, it's not a secret. We're not surprised. It, right. is a, it is a new thing, but they just took this, okay, what is happening story and, and said, how can we make it look like this is evidence that Joe Biden is owned by China, which is always, always what they do and always where they go with it. Trump even retruthed something <laughs> on his truth social platform. That was Jack Posobiec saying that Biden isn't shooting down the balloon because we are owned. We are owned by China. <laughs> it's not just Biden. It's the entire United States is apparently owned by the Chinese Communist Party, which really inflates the, <laughs> the, the threat and the situation and the reality to an absurd and obscene level. But it is a thing that they have been feeding their audience since Joe Biden even hinted that he was going to run. And a lot of it is about deflecting from all of the very strange connections that Donald Trump had to Russia. And it's it's what about ism that, oh, well, you think you think Trump's relationship with Putin is bad. Well, wait until you hear about Joe Biden and China. And it is quite flimsy. It's really quite flimsy. 
there are a few weird things with Hunter possibly taking this money from a guy connected to Chinese intelligence. But prove to me that that has anything to do with Joe, that he knew anything about it, much less it, it influenced any decision he made. And they can't, but they take that tiny little sliver of a thing and they've blown it into the story of the century, at least for their base and everyone else. (laughs) Everyone else finds that it deflates pretty easily. Yeah. And, you know, you've even got guys like Jim Jordan saying things like, well, did the balloon pass over the Penn Biden Center? It's like, (laughs) no, but it passed over the wrestling room at Ohio State. That's exactly what we would expect, though, right? It's Mm -hmm. they have all these intertwined narratives and streams that they try to cross them as much as possible. Now it doesn't even make any sense. Like the, you've got the narrative of Joe Biden had his, and we've talked about this before. Joe Biden had his documents stored at the Penn Biden center. The university of Pennsylvania has received some money from China. They, the, the university's money, which they get money from, all sorts of corporations and and donors and alumni, yada, yada, that all of the collective funds they have go to the Penn Biden Center. Thus, Joe Biden left his documents at the Penn Biden Center for every Chinese spy who wanted to to come right in. And and they probably got a valet service and, and just escorted to the secret documents. Because why have a simple narrative when you can have a complicated one? Mm-hmm. So they have that whole thing. And then, of course... Jim Jordan mentions the spy balloon, which like are the Chinese intelligence officers that Biden let into the Penn Biden Center. Well, the the documents are gone, but I guess they just live there now. They probably mm-hmm. just they probably just live on the roof or I uh, I don't know rooftop Chinese. Is that what we're? Yeah. <laughs> There's a guy by the name of Brendan Nalen who is a political scientist at Dartmouth who phrased it such that. Trump is incapable of explaining his abstruse scandal allegations in a way that makes sense outside the Fox News cinematic universe. And I think that's a really good way to put it. Like, if you're not up on the story, if you're not watching this stuff every night, average Americans are going to hear about, like, you know, the Penn Biden Center, and they're not going to know what that reference actually was. But if you watch Fox, you know this is where the documents were stored. And yeah. you have this whole idea of like, oh, my God, it's a nexus of corruption and the Chinese own it. It's You have to be up on the yeah. story. And if you're not, you're yeah. just going to get lost. I've seen a lot of people on Twitter comment like, what What are you talking about? What? The Penn Biden, the, the mm-hmm. universe. And some people didn't even say Penn Biden Center, which at least Penn is Pennsylvania is in the name. Right. And they're just, mm-hmm. oh, it's it's Pennsylvania. Well, the the state, the the <laughs> university, the wait, wait, was that the was that the place with um, Jerry Sandusky? Like, no, 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 that's the, like, they don't know they don't know what you're talking about. But yes, for that like solidly thirty percent MAGA, they immediately know what Jim Jordan is talking about, and another dot has been connected somehow with the mm-hmm. with the Chinese who live at the Penn Biden Center sending a secret communication to the balloon, which is then shot back to Beijing. And they're handling it in the most absurd and complicated way possible that would very easily get detected by the NSA in in half a second because uh, Joe Biden is owned by China. I don't, can you? Because they want to shit test the United States to see that, you know, how they would handle it and make Joe Biden look weak and owned. Yeah, it all ties together, really. Yeah. Don't it's, don't you? Yeah, it doesn't have to make sense. You just have to know we're we're getting closer mm-hmm. to figuring it out, and eventually, Q is going to come down from the mountaintop and send Joe and Hunter to Gitmo. I mean, that's just absolutely. And some of it is just pure fan service, but some of it is also like they throw this stuff out there every week, and the true believers that believe this that are like really bought into this whole thing absolutely look at it and go okay that's that's the new thing that's the new talking point i have to be out tweeting this or i have to be on facebook posting all of this and it's and and it's also like a sign for everyone as to where you should be looking 
either go uncover something, go find another connection, go find a member of the staff that's ethnically Chinese and then make something up or just make sure your content is is going on in this direction, down this stream. We're going to build out this narrative. Again, we, we always caution with this, like they don't know where it's going. They don't necessarily have any grand plan. It's just we've they've laid a foundation and you just have to keep adding to it and building to it and the narrative grows and it grows and it makes less and less sense mm-hmm. to anyone who's not in this Fox News orbit but they don't seem to care and the momentum moves this way it's another reason it blows up on them so often is because they don't plan it out and events have this way of getting ahead of where they are and not going in the direction that they we're kind of expecting things to go like, for example, the balloon, this never would have happened under the Trump administration. And then all of a sudden you've got various Pentagon officials saying, uh, actually it did. We didn't necessarily understand what that was at the time, but looking at it now we do. And they're, well, okay. So now it's the deep state lying and you have to go farther and farther. Like you said, out on that limb in order to like tie it together and make any sense. And unless you're a real big, huge fan, it's just not going to, you're going to lose the normies. Yeah, the argument about this never would have happened under Trump. I think that lasted maybe 24 hours. Mm -hmm. I mean, I watched the tweets come in and it's just, it's so much and it's so many. And you can picture Trump with the the Superman outfit or NFT and like they're all just waving the banner and Trump, Trump would have just shot that thing down immediately. And and then looking at like some of the more absurd tweets and uh, the Donald, which (laughs) still exist out in the world and is is kind of the pro-Trump troll hive mind, but their comment section is saying, yeah, nuke China, shoot down the balloon and then nuke China. And if Trump was there, he would have already done it. (laughs) It's like, okay. (laughs) But yeah, it didn't last very long. And you had all these stories coming out and saying that, yeah, there were these balloons and they've been tracking it. And and they're still, it's kind of unclear if they knew right away that these were Chinese balloons. They, they spotted the balloons. It's not clear when they figured out what they were. It's not clear. Like a lot of the details are just coming in, but they don't, they don't wait for the details. They don't wait for the, the Pentagon to get all of their ducks in a row and come out with a statement. It's well, immediately for MAGA, it was, oh, this is fake news. They're just trying to cover for Biden because he's so weak. And because there's that kind of underlying narrative of the deep state is in bed with big pharma and big pharma and China are also in bed. And that gets off into the whole anti-vax arguments and information. The narrative shifted quickly once the information starts coming out. And I even saw Fox reporting on it that, yeah, these balloons were actually out there during the Trump presidency. And even though they were kind of not, they weren't blaming Trump, they weren't doing any of that, but it got to the point where they had to the MAGA media space had to address it. They had to say something. And as far as I can tell, Trump has just denied it. Like mm-hmm. it's flat out, this didn't happen under the Trump presidency. That is his line and he is sticking with it. And and so MAGA also has to kind of adapt to his tweets and his his arguments and his lines. And so if Trump says it didn't happen, well, it, and it did happen then the only rational-ish argument for them is that the deep state hid it from Trump because the deep state in bed with China, yada, yada. To the point that you've got Tom Fitton, the head of Judicial Watch, out here calling Mark Milley, the Joint Chief of Staff for the United States, a seditionist. He's calling him a traitor to the United States in bed with Beijing. And this is a guy that plenty of people on the right take seriously. Mm -hmm. And you've got him retweeting Poso. And of course, Poso is all in on Beijing Biden and that whole spiel. And then he does a couple shows about it. But it's everywhere. Oh, yeah. In their space, the traitors hid this from Donald Trump because they knew that Donald Trump will destroy China. And he is the toughest president on the Chinese government we've ever had and will ever have. And if we don't get him back immediately, then we're essentially surrendering to Beijing. And it's not real. The threat from China is real. China is doing things that we have to counter. 
mm-hmm. that we have to deal with. And in plenty of cases, Biden and the FBI and the Army and Navy are countering. You look at the FBI's website and you see how many different guides and press releases and arrests they make against Chinese espionage. It's not like they're not trying. No, <laughs> it's a- no. And it's not like they have to look all that hard to find it. And they are running these people in whenever they can. They have released information about China running its own police station network throughout a lot of other countries that are ostensibly like to help the diaspora. But in reality, it's a way that they can pressure dissidents. You know about this because the FBI has released statements about this. You've got things like the fact that we are looking to renew some of our alliances, especially in the Pacific. We're moving more troops back into the Philippines. We're beefing up our military presence in that part of the world. We wouldn't be doing this kind of thing if we were planning to be soft on China. We just wouldn't. No, we absolutely wouldn't. And you're right. We're, we're going into the Philippines. We are increasing our presence in Japan. We've been making outreach to India. We are looking at China's enemies in the region. And spoiler, there's not a real shortage on this. No. <laughs> the Chinese just don't make good neighbors and they are not great at making friends. And part of it is that kind of belief system that we've talked about where they they tend to think they're better than everyone else and they are not afraid to say so so yeah you're right absolutely there are things that are that are happening i did find it interesting that at the same time this balloon story is everywhere and going crazy and first it's in maga media and then it's mainstream media picks it up and then it turns into an snl skit but (laughs) Right at the same time this kind of blew up was the first announcement that we were adding four new bases in the Philippines. I don't think that's coordinated. I don't. I think it just sort of happened that way, and it does sometimes. And it does. I think it's a coincidence. But it's worth saying that there's clearly one that China would prefer you be talking about, and Mm -hmm. (laughs) it's this balloon mess. And and when you look at some of the tweets about what the balloon was here to do, people thinking it's uh, an EMP, it's going to essentially knock out the power grid. Of course, these are the same people that tell you the hard right, the extremists who are literally planning attacks and getting arrested. There was one in Baltimore a week ago that they were trying to destroy Baltimore's power grid. Yes, they they made some interesting speculations about all of that. I mean, one of the biggest things I heard about the power grids when they first started revealing some of these attacks was, oh, it was Antifa. And as it turns out last week, it seems like you spelled Adam Waffen wrong. Could you be more wrong? Yeah, exactly. It's like literally guy starts a terrorist white supremacist militia, ends up going to jail for having bomb making materials in his apartment, does five years, gets out, hooks up with a girl that he met in prison who did attacks, armed robberies with a machete and her her partner at the time. And then they decide they're going to take out the power to Baltimore because Adam Waffen, because the same reasons he went to jail in the first place. The guy didn't obviously learn anything in the entire time he was in there besides maybe how to get better at what he was doing. But first thing he did was talk to a federal informant online. And, you know. <laughs> oh, you just hate to see it, oh, don't you? No kidding. It's just too bad. Ugh. But look, oh, Wait, you you just explained how the FBI does its job. Exactly. Ah. Left of boom, as it's called. (laughs) But are we really supposed to care? Because we all know that Baltimore is a a left wing in BLM Antifa city, and we don't we don't really care about those. So Mm -mm. not a story. Yeah. Oh, the deep state's worried about black people having power, but what about Donald Trump's free speech or something? (laughs) (laughs) I I mean, yeah, great job, FBI. Uh, Glad they didn't they didn't destroy the power grid that's that's good news Mm -hmm. these are the same people that don't tell you those stories because they're right-wing extremists right but they think they think china has got a balloon that they sent from china to here to blow an emp through a city so it's an emp it's some other kind of bomb i've seen some of them speculating uh, about it being a bioweapon and maybe it's covid 20 or covid 21 or 22 
clearly the Chinese are trying to gain something here. These these balloons, and, and there's now reports that there have been several balloons that have come in the U.S., both the Trump presidency and the Biden presidency. There are apparently other balloons that have gone to other countries around the world. They are attempting to collect some amount of of information Mm -hmm. and data and man i don't i just i would like to know why if spying and and data collection is so bad i people may not remember this but once upon a time uh trump was supposed to essentially shut down the chinese telecom companies huawei and zte and he also later threatened to ban TikTok. And the ZTE ban eventually went in place. But Trump also, like, they had him set on it. They had his policy aligned. He had said all the right things. We're going to ban this. We're not going to let this happen. And then he sent a tweet. <laughs> <laughs> and, and it later, I think it later came out that he had, he had talked to Xi and Xi had had convinced him to lay off. And it's that it's that thing of Trump always, maybe not always, but Trump very often repeats the thing he heard last. And so, yes, right. CTE got banned eventually, but she talked him out of it. And this is the same she who Trump trusted when COVID was raging and China let it get out of control, didn't contain it. They were lying in the early days about how bad it was and they didn't lock everything down soon enough. And there is some debate about whether or not they could have stopped it at all. And maybe they couldn't, but lying didn't help. And you know who defended that? Well, Donald Trump. Mm -hmm. So MAGA has inflated the threat of China that they're perfect and wonderful and, oh my God, we're owned and everything is going to come crashing down. And the reality is China is a threat. We very much believe that this is a new Cold War and the Chinese government absolutely wants to replace us as the world superpower. And given their history and the fact that they are an authoritarian state, we very much stand opposed to that. But the idea that China owns us is just silly. The idea that their form of government is better is very much questionable when you look at their collapsing population Mm -hmm. due to government policies which crashed the birth rates. Mm -hmm. When you look at one child policy, failed one child policy. Very much failed. And you look at their economy, which was already kind of a paper tiger in a way. And there were a lot of questions about like, can they really sustain this debt and this growth? And they're building these ghost towns so that they can prop up their economy. Can that last forever? That was a question before COVID hit and then COVID hit and their economy is in worse shape and zero COVID really messed up their supply chains. Mm -hmm. And while they are increasing their influence around the world and especially in developed countries, they're also not very good at making friends in these developed countries. And so, yeah, the threat is real and China might win, but China hasn't already won. And there are some real flaws in their system. There are plenty of flaws in ours, but there's some very real ones in theirs. So MAGA has built up this threat into something that it isn't. And they're doing it because they they aren't really focused on the new cold war. They're focused on beating Joe Biden in the next election. Right. And so you make China look stronger and then you need Donald Trump to come in and save the day. Mm-hmm. Even though it's not as if Trump was especially hard on China when he was in charge, it's not as if Trump did a whole lot to stop the ascendance of China when he was in charge. He's still in their minds, the guy who nobody tries anything on him because he's, he's Donald Trump. Never did anything wrong ever. Well, speaking of Trump and the ongoing GOP civil war, now that Nikki Haley has announced her candidacy, the 2024 Republican primary has officially begun. Well, it really began with Donald Trump implying that Ron DeSantis is a pedophile on Truth Social because an establishment type like Nikki Haley is running at best to be picked to be Trump's VP. DeSantis is the real threat. But his response to Trump's accusations of grooming and drinking with underage girls was not to name Trump and to redirect the conversation to how DeSantis is actually focused on fighting Joe Biden. 
haven't we seen this trick before? And how well did that work out for Trump's competition in 2016? Well, I don't know. What's Jeb doing these days? (laughs) (laughs) Oh, it just, it really did seem like a run moment. (laughs) Yeah. And he said it in front of two boxes of Pampers. I mean, that was just really the DeSantis advance team, man. You guys are just winning all the wins. He's just fighting so hard. And it's like they, they're they building the troll army that maybe they're something maybe something is lost in translation i don't know if they're like they're they're trying to get caught up to speed on on how this war is actually going to be fought but they're only halfway through the book i'm (laughs) i'm not sure they evidently didn't get the a team of trolls either i mean maybe some of these people were coasting on inflated reputations when it came to their troll army credentials yeah maybe maybe if you're just the guy who retweets the guy or repackages the guy who actually kind of gets the conversation going yeah maybe you're not as clever as you may be getting paid to be by ron desantis right now hey that guy said the n-word a whole bunch of times he must be a good troll let's hire him oh man you just you were so mean to caleb hole he i know he said that many years ago he was a many years ago (laughs) he was many many (laughs) Uh, yeah, I'm not sure that they do have the best trolls and I'm not sure. (laughs) I don't know. It's just, I understand what DeSantis is doing and it has been this strategy of he's, he didn't even mention Trump. He just mentioned Joe Biden and said, oh, I'm, I'm fighting Joe Biden and he is the respectable owner of the libs like he he is definitely building this troll army he is definitely trying to get these people to come over to his side and he is definitely signaling that hey we're fine with this you want to post your your batshit fighting cnn memes that's fine just just replace trump's body with mine like we're gonna we're we're gonna make it happen because he knows what he knows he needs the content creators and he knows what they do and he's got mm-hmm. he's got Christina Pushaw, who is honestly out there just leaning so heavily into the CRT stuff. And she's, of course, hanging out in, in Jack Basobic's mentions and as as one does who wants attention and wants to be in good favor of the the 4chan trolling elite. But <laughs> it <laughs> it's not going to be enough. No, even if he. Because <laughs> he's, you look at the what what are the polls are right now, and it's got it's got Trump. He's got Trump at forty eight percent. Last we checked, this is from Interactive Polls. Um, DeSantis at thirty one, Pence at eight, Haley at three, and then a bunch of other people. Yeah, so you've you've got DeSantis at thirty one, and if he maintains this strategy of responding to Trump, but not saying his name and not getting in the mud and, and just trying to be (laughs) Ron, then I think he could probably keep around 20 to 30%. But then the debates are going to happen. Yes. And if history is any judge going to go, especially well for Ron, he's not the greatest debater. We saw that with Charlie Crist, who obviously lost by quite a bit. But if you go back and watch that debate, Chris got him good several times. I mean, he, he put Ron on the spot about running in 2024, and Ron had no good answer for that. And if you're debating for a governor's race at that level, you have an answer for that question. Whether it's a good answer, whether yeah. it's a kind of mealy-mouthed, wishy-washy answer, you've thought about that because you know you're going to get that question. You absolutely know. And yeah. Ron DeSantis blanked it, just whiffed it. And I... I I see the idea of him walking into a debate with Trump and just getting buzzsawed. Yeah, it shows, well, it shows that you can dress DeSantis up <laughs> however you want, which they have, well, sometimes in, in unhelpful ways, but like, he looks a lot like Trump. He uses the same gestures. He has what looks like the same suit. He just, he holds himself the way Trump holds himself. They've decided that... Republican voters want this image and it is the image he's putting out, but wearing the clothes does not necessarily make the man because he's still a politician and he wants to 
be <laughs> he wants to be a politician who talks of well joe biden is a great guy but he is just steering this country in an awful direction and i have a plan and and trump is gonna come in with like the wwe theme song in the background and he's gonna i mean imagine remember him in the debates following hillary <laughs> around like he he he's gonna talk over you he's just gonna he's gonna mm -hmm. browbeat you he's gonna throw you off your game he he isn't going to play fair and the people mm -hmm. love him for it no this wouldn't work as a democrat but for them this is what they want and keep in mind also and this is kind of a little thing but it's definitely going to matter on a debate stage donald trump is six foot two and he's a big guy Ron DeSantis, five foot nine, in big shoes. He's going to be following the little guy around the stage, and that's going to be a visual that people are going to have a real hard time getting out of their heads, watching Donald Trump just smack this little guy around. And, you know, this matters. They're big on dominance and, you know, intimidation displays, and that's not going to look real good for old Ron. And, yeah, the left can kind of brush off that whole alpha male thing. It's, oh, well, they're just, it's toxic masculinity and we don't want any part of it. And fine, that's fair enough. The, and that is not going to get you the Democratic nomination. But even if it looks kind of silly and absurd to someone who's not in that world, mm -hmm. they very much buy into it. They very much believe it. They They want it. There's a reason that, we talked about Trump fawning over Putin and she, and it is that idea of, well, they're alpha males. They're big, strong, authoritarian leaders who just mm -hmm. get what they want because of their force of will. And the right is very much on board with that, and they, they want more of it. And to use their terminology, DeSantis looks like a beta. He does. And look no further than the hurricane response in Florida when Joe Biden came down. And you can even see the two of them walking around and Biden making him look small and weak and like grumpy by comparison. Here's Biden doing what he does, talking to people, having, you know, a Joe Biden moment. And these guys, DeSantis is standing there kind of looking like, well, you know, this is not going <laughs> to go well for Ron. I mean, He's the closest thing – I get it. He's the closest thing that the establishment has to a credible candidate to take this guy on in 2024, but only because he hasn't really been vetted yet. And he hasn't really been challenged, and they're going to play those uh -huh. that uh... – <laughs> that what is it 2018 campaign uh -huh. ad where i owe everything to donald oh. trump i'm the most trumpy of all the people involved yeah everyone knows my husband ron DeSantis is endorsed by president trump but he's also an amazing dad ron loves playing with the kids build the wall he reads stories then mr trump said you're fired I love that part. He's teaching Madison to talk. Make America great again. People say Ron's all Trump, but he is so much more. Big league. So good. I just thought you should know. Ron DeSantis for governor. Yeah, and when Trump says stuff like he owes everything to me, I'm not sure that it's entirely true, but it won't matter. When, it, when that statement comes with that ad and that those images just get plastered all over social media mm -hmm. yeah it's gonna work it's obviously gonna work and i also think we know trump is is coming back on twitter soon he's said as mm -hmm. much at least it's it's a matter of when not if and i also think people are underestimating well one how much he is going to dominate the conversation once again in part because elon is going to what he hasn't broken he is tilted in favor of the right. And if you thought you were getting recommended too many Ben Shapiro tweets, just wait until Donald Trump is back on the platform and tweeting mm -hmm. and everyone is tweeting about him and everyone is quote tweeting him and everyone is reply guying him again. It is going to be like every other tweet that you see recommended is going to be Donald uh -huh. Trump. It's going to be the Donald Trump show all over again. It's going to be worse than it's ever been. And Guys like Ron DeSantis are not going to be able to get in the conversation. It's going to be very tough for anybody who's not Donald Trump to get any kind of air going on social media 
once Trump is back on Twitter. Because it isn't just Twitter. Trump being on Twitter dominates the other social media platforms, too, because it shares out from Twitter. People take it to Twitter from Twitter. They take it to Instagram. They take it to Facebook. They have I post it on Instagram and then my 150 friends start yelling about it and we all start yelling about how awful this guy is or how great he is, depending on which side of the political spectrum we're on. It leads to Facebook arguments. And what it does is it smothers the air in the political conversation. You can't talk about anything other than that guy. It's going to happen again. Yeah. And I think there's also an underestimation by the DeSantis people of how much the right feeds off of Trump's tweets and energy. I think maybe there's, there's been a couple of years where we're not, we're not dealing with it all the time and having that separation to truth social kind of makes it easy to think, well, it's, it's different now. Things have changed and things, things have changed, but they haven't changed enough that that dynamic is really going to go away. And you have, you have people on Twitter that, are going to be thirsty as hell <laughs> for Donald Trump to retweet them mm -hmm. because when they do their views and their subscription and all the eyeballs on them go up by the thousands uh, guaranteed yep. you are going to make money off of a Donald Trump retweet. And we saw it while he was president. You had all of these guys like who is, who is Carpe Dunctum? Logan Cook, the the meme smith who ended up at the White House with Donald Trump at this little troll convention that they had. Some dork from Kansas. Yeah, but Trump liked him and Trump retweeted him. And now this is his job and career. And you can laugh at that, but he doesn't care. He's making a living making memes. And it really can be that simple that you can get random guys who don't really have any particular set of skills and they just start tweeting or making videos or doing things that Trump likes and he retweets them. And before they know it, they're working for TPUSA and they're set mm -hmm. and they're good. And they know this, they can't wait. And this is the issue for DeSantis. He essentially has to become Trump to beat Trump, but he's never going to be as good as Trump is at this. No. Maybe it's, it's, it's why we keep saying he needs to wait four years because maybe at that point he can be the guy, but right now he's going to be a poor imitation. And if he doesn't go all in, then yeah, the donors are going to love it, but the base are just going to turn mm -hmm. on him. And it's going to poison the well for any future runs by that guy, because it's going to end up like, like you said, Ron, <laughs> He's going to have that sort of reputation as Jeb 2024. <laughs> and all of the pro-Trump people are going to be making the memes and, and finding every way that they can mock him and belittle him and tear him down. And like you said, it's going to stick with him forever. It's, it's never going to wash off. It's never going to go mm -hmm. away. The only way it goes away is if he backs off. And, and that is the threat. And that is absolutely what Trump and Roger Stone and their ilk are hinting at. And DeSantis still seems to think he has a way out of it that, oh, the voters just, they're tired of Trump and all these things. And maybe they are. The voters he needs to win aren't. Yeah. He's getting some bad advice. He's getting some advice from some people who would benefit from a DeSantis run, whether or not he wins. It again goes back to that. I don't think he's going to beat no. Trump. But if he did, the DeSantis that comes out of it will not win the general. No, no he won't. And I think that, like I said, his backers, his supporters aren't really concerned with whether he wins at this point. They don't want Trump. They want somebody other than Trump. They want to get back to a sense of being kingmakers to some extent. And they aren't the kingmakers anymore. That kills them. They would like to be the people that make the decisions, you know, the Koch brothers, the, the Fox Network, the Murdochs. These are the people who have been used to for years being the power players in the GOP and Trump upended all that. He absolutely did. And and let's be entirely clear here that we don't want Trump either. Nope. We we would like him to be gone, but you had your chance after January 6th and you didn't take it. Mm -hmm. So you did this to yourself. Absolutely. Great going. <laughs> also, it's like we're saying, if, 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 if DeSantis has any shot here of beating him, then it's Trump light. Maybe, maybe there's a window there, but again, it's like, even if 
that version of DeSantis wins, it's still kind of Trump's party. It's still we've we saw the the hearings this week when they brought in the former Twitter executives and they're threatening these people with jail time over made up Twitter nonsense. Mm -hmm. Like this is Trump's tweets have come to life and it is now the engine that moves the Republican Party. And there is a sizable chunk of that Republican Party who would be better described as Trump voters like they aren't voting for DeSantis or anybody like that. They have said in no uncertain terms that they'd rather the Democrat win because that takes them closer to what they view as the crash of everything. Either they get Trump or they get more societal strife. And these people, as you said on your appearance on the Lincoln Project not too long ago, they would prefer to be on the insurgent side anyway. They would absolutely prefer to be on the insurgent side of things because they don't govern. They don't want to govern. They don't want to do anything besides hold hearings, show trials, make a lot of noise, and fundraise. They're not the people you would call if you needed something done for your district. You're not electing these people for that reason. You're electing them because you want to see them on the libs. Yeah. So I think that if DeSantis is smart, he'll find a graceful way to bow out of this thing until 2028. Trump won't be running. One way or the other, Trump will not be running in 2028. The reality is this is Trump's last chance to win. Now, I'm I'm with you. He may he may still run when it's 2028, depending on how this goes. If it if they somehow steal, quote, you know, air quotes there, steal the election from him then he'll probably keep campaigning, mm-hmm. which essentially means tweeting and maybe occasionally yelling on some live streams or some, <laughs> some videos that he puts out. But like, he's going to be in this race one way or the other, whether you like it or not. And if they quote unquote steal this election from him, then he'll probably run again in four mm-hmm. years. And in four years, he's going to be 80. It's not going to happen. This is the last chance he has to win and he knows it and he's fighting for it. If you look at him, honestly, I'm a little shocked because it does look like he's been working out. You see some of these videos that he's putting out and it's like it is a more refined Trump. He is listening to some real political advisors who are telling him how to win. He's still sending the tweets. Mm-hmm. He is still sending the shit posting is Trump and it's always going to be Trump, but he's also throwing in some more traditional stuff and it is very much in line with what the party is putting out there. And the, the point being he's, he's in it to Mm -hmm. win it. He's not just here to grift. He wants the nomination. He wants to win. I think maybe the idea of getting back in the white house and having four years of vengeance is just enough to, to fuel him once again to, to give it one last try. But this can end a lot of bad ways for anyone who goes up against Trump. And people like Nikki Haley and Pence and Pompeo, they have no shot. And maybe they're doing it to be, well, Pence, (laughs) I think Pence wants to be VP again because he doesn't seem like he wants to He wants to to sell some books. But (laughs) Mike Pence is trying to sell books. I saw his book at Costco not too long ago. He's selling books. Yeah. And Nikki Haley maybe wants to be VP or Secretary of State. I don't know if you read the the article about how Trump is looking at Nikki Haley, but it is kind of like, we're just not really worried about her. Like, she maybe she's doing this so she can be VP, but like, eh, I mean. <laughs> well, I don't think anybody should really worry all that much about Nikki Haley. She just isn't. Yeah, 10 years ago, maybe, but that ship has well and truly sailed. You know, I think this person's right when they say, like, the advisor who speaks with Trump in the Daily Beast that he's going to be nice to the people he needs to be nice to and the people he thinks might be useful for something down the line. And Nikki Haley's definitely in that category. But really, Nikki Haley's going to be sparring with Marjorie Taylor Greene for the vice president spot. Let's be real for a minute here. Yeah. And yeah. Mar- MTG plays better with MAGA. Yeah, I think I could see Haley getting secretary of state. Like, sure, sure. I could, I could see that. I don't think she's going to get VP, but... Yeah, Secretary of State. That's that's a possibility. I mean, if you can give that to she was a former UN ambassador. She's got some international experience. You know, I mean, she could. Yeah, she hobnobs. She knows people. She's part of the clique. Yeah, 
she would get some normie conservatives, some of the base, some of the the donor base on board. But yeah, I don't think that she's she not would, enough. No, they're, they'd be afraid she's going to be Pence two point mm-hmm. They're not. They're not doing that. Well, how is she not? Uh, exactly. And you've got some other people who are going to be out there trying to make money, fundraise. They're going to be gone quickly. I honestly, I I think VP is going to be between MTG, Carrie Lake, and Tulsi. Yeah, yeah, I could see that. I know Tulsi's the wild card, probably, but if he wants to go on a unity ticket with the (laughs) Democrat, (laughs) he's, I mean, let's let, like... (laughs) I feel like someone has at least considered it because why is that lady hosting Tucker when he's not there? Why why is she the fill-in? She's mm-hmm. obviously not good at it. And I, I don't even blame her. Tucker has done this for decades. It, right. It's not her spiel. She's She'd get better. I don't think she's an unintelligent person. She's a horrible person, but she's not unintelligent. But, like, why is it Tulsi? I mean, maybe just to piss off the libs, but I... I don't think anything's decided there. I don't think it pisses off the libs all that much. I think the libs just kind of view her as a, you got elected as a Democrat under somewhat false pretenses. Bye. Yeah. She's not in Congress. She's not something No, most Democrats, I think, spend two minutes in a year thinking about. But, I mean, if you're trying to get her over with Tucker's audience, this is a really good way to do it. Trying to convince her, oh, hey, because, like, you know, the Dems know who's on side. The Dems know who is on the on the board and who isn't. The Dems know who's actually really on the team and who's not on the team. And yeah, <laughs> the minute Tulsi kind of hit the national stage, everybody realized that she's about as leftist as Glenn Greenwald, really. Yeah, <laughs> she's, you know, not somebody they can say whatever they want about their political beliefs, but their actions and their votes on various bills, her denial of you know, she's an Assadist for fuck's sake. <laughs> it's like, this is not a left position unless you're talking about the Glenn Greenwald, Code Pink, Scott Ritter, all of these other people left. And that's not the Democratic Party. They can say whatever they want, but they're not. These these people are the Jill Stein left. <laughs> but back to DeSantis. If DeSantis is in it, he'll be in it for a while. And you know what? Maybe he'll win. But I I think if he wins the primary, he will never become president because that is how thoroughly they will poison the well. Ask yourself this. If he somehow, some way manages to win the primaries, what circumstances does he win under that you don't have Trump saying it was a steal? You don't have Trump saying the whole thing was stolen from me. How does that play out? And all the bitterness we saw in the Democratic primary in 2016, when all the Bernie Sanders supporters were convinced that the election was stolen, that the primary was stolen from Bernie, and that Bernie would have won, that is going to look like congratulations compared to how the Trump voters are going to handle this, especially if Trump says it was stolen. He's going to have a whatever section of the base that is not going to vote for DeSantis or as Fuentes has said, they're going to groip him. Yes. Yeah, very much so. And I see, like I was kind of talking about, that Ron kind of half gets it, or his advisors are halfway through the book. But when DeSantis gets up there and talks about what's best for the Republican Party, that's when I know they don't really understand Trump and Trumpism. Because the most hardcore of the MAGA base are not Republican voters. They are Trump voters. They will vote for Trump and no one Mm -hmm. else. And if it's not Trump, they will gripe or troll or tear you down because they do not care about the Republican Party. Right. At the very best, the very best case you can hope for if you're Ron DeSantis is that those people just sit it out and don't vote. The worst case is that they actively proceed to make your life miserable for the next, you know, three to four months after that. And... I think that's where they're going to go because these are the people that want to be able to say, well, Trump would have won. Trump would have beat him. Trump would have beat Sleepy Joe. Trump absolutely would have. But instead, you somehow stole it from him. You put Ron DeSantis out there and he got clowned. So you're going to deserve what you get. That is the playbook. That is exactly what I expect to happen if somehow, some way, Ron DeSantis ends up with the GOP nomination. 
but I don't even see that happening. No, no. And maybe if he bows out now, I could absolutely see him winning in four years. I could absolutely see him being president one day. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm don't feel great about that possibility, but let's just be realistic here. Republicans going to win again. Eventually the the two party system is what it is, but if he wants a future in politics, I, I think he needs to do a little more homework mm-hmm. um, and understand the movement that he is trying to steal from the man who definitely does not want to let no. go. No. Thanks for listening to the did nothing wrong podcast. If you want to hear more, you can go to did nothing wrong pod.com. You can also follow us on Twitter at James, the word four and the letter M all one word and Grizza BJJ, G-R-Z-A BJJ, as well as DNW Pod. Thanks again for tuning in. And remember, everyone mentioned did nothing wrong.